Morning Exercises, October 13th. I will spare them, as a man spareth his own son that serveth him. Malachi 3.17 If a man spares anyone, it will surely be his own son. The very relation pleads for him. Even a faulty child is a child still and is not easily turned out of doors like a servant. Absalom had risen in rebellion against his father, and David was compelled to fight with his own son. But said he on the eve of battle, Deal gently for my sake with the young man, even with Absalom. Who can imagine his feelings while thinking of the action? With what hope and fear was his parental bosom fluttering when the messenger arrived with the result? Who does not seem to hear his very heart strings break as he goes up into the chamber weeping? O oh, my son Absalom, my son, my son Absalom, would God I had died for thee, O oh, Absalom, my son, my son. But when a son is dutiful, and the father sees that he desires and aims and endeavors to please him, now this is the image God here employs to raise our confidence the more. I will spare them as a man spareth his own son that serveth him. In the same strain is our Savior's tender appeal. If ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your Father, which is in heaven, give good things to them that ask him? God's own children, who serve him, need sparing mercy. It is exercised towards them four ways. First, he spares them as to exemption. This has often been seen in times of public and general calamity. Does the flood come and sweep away the world of the ungodly? An ark is provided for the saving of Noah and his house. Are the cities of the plain destroyed? Lot is sent forth out of the overthrow. Darkness that might be felt enveloped the Egyptians but the Israelites had light in all their dwellings. When the executioners were approaching Jerusalem, said a mark, says God, upon the foreheads of the men that sigh and that cry for the abominations that are done in the midst of the land. Some of his servants are taken away from the evil to come. Pious connections removed by death are often spared the sight of relative troubles under which perhaps they would have sunk. Many a pious youth, like Abijah, has come to an early grave in peace and been housed from after storms. The heathen said, They whom the gods love die young. How often has he spared us, spared our lives, our senses, our limbs, our substance, our relations, and friends, with regard to all of which we must gratefully acknowledge it is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed. Secondly, he spares them as to correction. As his word tells us, he that spareth the rod hateth his son. He will not himself refuse to strike when it is needful. Whom the Lord loveth, he therefore chasteneth. But how? What is the prayer of his people? O Lord, correct me, but with judgment, not in thine anger, lest thou bring me to nothing. And he hears them, and spares them as to the degree of the affliction. 
in measure when it shooteth forth, thou wilt debate with it. He stayeth his rough wind in the day of the east wind. They are afflicted, but they have alleviations. It might have been much worse. Others are more distressed. One comfort is gone, but many remain. Cast down, but not destroyed. Like as a father pitieth his children, so the Lord pitieth them that fear him. He knoweth our frame, he remembereth that we are dust. For the same holds with regard to continuance. He will not always chide, neither will he keep his anger forever. I will not contend forever, neither will I be always wroth. For the spirit should fail before me and the souls which I have made. See an instance of despairing goodness expressed with incomparable tenderness with regard to Ephraim. Is Ephraim my dear son? Is he a pleasant child? For since I spake against him, I do earnestly remember him still. Therefore my bowels are troubled for him. I will surely have mercy upon him, saith the Lord. Thirdly, he spares them as to exertion. He considers their strength and will not require of some what he ordains of others. A father in his family would not impose upon an infant the service he would lay upon a young man. To some in Thyatira, the Lord said, I will put upon you none other burden. The children are tender, says Jacob, and the flocks and herds with young are with me. And as men should overdrive them one day, all the flock would die. How much does this remind us of another of whom it is said, He shall feed his flock like a shepherd. He shall gather the lambs with his arm, and carry them in his bosom, and shall gently lead those that are with young. When our Savior was blamed for not enjoining fastings on his disciples, he replied, No man putteth a piece of new cloth unto an old garment, for that which is put in to fill it up taketh from the garment and the rent is made worse. Neither do men put new wine into old bottles, else the bottles break, and the wine runneth out, and the bottles perish. But they put new wine into new bottles, and both are preserved. There is, says Henry, in well-doing and overdoing, and such overdoing as may prove undoing. Many religious people are blamable here. They expect too much to be given up before persons have realized the comforts of the Holy Ghost. They want to affect everything at a stroke. They forget their own ignorance and slowness when God began to deal with them. They forget him who does not despise the day of small things. They forget him who said to his followers, I have yet many things to say unto you, but ye cannot bear them now. Fourthly, he spares them as to acceptance. Their best actions are imperfect. Their holiest duties are defiled. Their obedience needs pardon. To whom does not this apply? Nehemiah had done much for the cause of God, but does he appeal to justice to reward him? No, but to mercy, to forgive him. Remember me, O oh my God, concerning this also, and spare me according to the greatness of thy mercy. Paul, after extolling Onesiphorus so highly, Praise that even he may find mercy of the Lord in that day. I am looking, says the great John Howe when dying, for eternal life, 
not as a profitable servant, but as a pardoned sinner. Where is the Christian, however, distinguished his attainments, who even in looking over his Sabbaths and his communions at the Lord's table, and every alms deed he ever performed, is not constrained to pray, Enter not into judgment with thy servant, O Lord, for in thy sight shall no flesh living be justified. Well, he will spare you as to your deficiencies in duty. He takes the design, he regards the motive, he looketh at the heart. He will pardon what is yours and reward what is his own. He views you and your services through the mediation of his dear son in whom he is well pleased. Ah, he spared not him that he might spare you. If we sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the propitiation for our sins. And as God said to Job's friends, so he says to us, My servant shall pray for you, and him will I accept, lest I deal with you according to your folly. Never forget the goodness and kindness of God. He is your Father, and he will spare you. But spare not yourselves. Mind no labor. Regard no expense in his cause. Deny yourselves. Take up your cross and follow him fully. Follow him whithersoever he goeth.